Amateur radio enthusiasts say saboteurs who've been jamming the airways must be stopped before someone is killed. It follows the discovery of a jamming device which had been booby-trapped with explosives. You probably appreciate that uh, Victor Alpha did have a jamming device uh, set up near to it recently and uh, someone fitted a, a booby trap to it. Hidden by a tree on an island in the middle of nowhere, a crude radio device, booby trapped with explosives. The man who discovered it was cautious about his find. Luckily for him, it failed to go off. During August and September of 1994, amateurs in the footprint of GB3VA in Aylesbury sat glued to their scanners as a group of radio amateurs from North London embarked on a campaign to place fully automated transmitters in the repeater's vicinity. The Aylesbury repeater bomb was an unfortunate incident that came about after quite a sophisticated device was made and began jamming the repeater at Brill in Buckinghamshire. It was quite complex and played many pieces of music and sampled speech that played completely randomly. The device was used to ridicule the GB3 VA repeater group and fired up at all times of day and night. The problem with this device, for its makers at least, was that it transmitted for too long and far too often, at least once every 10 minutes. Of course, this meant that local radio amateurs soon found it and stole it. The people who made it spent quite a bit of money on the device, but this didn't deter them as they were up and running again within the week, with a new and improved model. The purpose of the device was to cause a nuisance to anyone who tried to use the repeater, and back in the 1980s and 90s, repeaters were much busier than they are today. Unlike many other devices deployed during this time to disrupt amateur radio operations, this one had quite a sinister side. Annoyed at having their handiwork stolen, the makers of the jammer incorporated an anti-tamper device in the new model. This has been described as anything between a bomb and a theatrical smoke effect depending on who you talk to, but as everyone concerned now denies all knowledge of it, it's hard to get to the truth behind the matter. This new device was quite well hidden on an island in the lake at Watton Underwood in Aylesbury. This was strategically placed just over 2.5 miles from the GB3 VA repeater site on top of the church in Brill and hidden well out of public view. Its location was discovered by local amateurs again and brought to the attention of the Watton estate manager who decided to investigate it further. He described it as a white box roughly the size of a burglar alarm with a flare attached and wires leading to a plastic tube which housed an antenna stuck into a shallow hole. He removed it from the hole with a stick and discovered that it was fitted with a flare which was designed to go off if anybody disturbed it, but luckily it didn't go off when it was found. The booby trap also had a solar panel fitted to recharge its batteries and keep it running indefinitely. The estate manager decided to get the police involved and eventually the bomb squad was called to defuse the device. The story caused quite a stir amongst the amateur radio community and featured on local television and newspaper reports, CFAX as a news bulletin and a couple of publications aimed at the Laughing Policeman Wireless Society members. Government inspectors had suspicions that the Laughing Policeman Wireless Society was behind the planting of the explosive device but this again was not the case. It was also believed that there were numerous other identical devices within Oxfordshire and other neighbouring counties but these were never found. The people behind the making and planting of the booby trap were never actually caught and nobody was ever questioned by the police in relation to the incident. The explosive jammer never reappeared again but GB3VA remained the target of abuse and still does to this day. The September 1994 issue of Radcom reported an incident involving GB3VA when it was deliberately jammed by a QRP signal coming from a car with amateur radio antennas on it parked next to the repeater site. The car sped off when two members of the Aylesbury Vale repeater group turned up to investigate and nothing was ever heard from him again. Someone could have been blinded or maimed or indeed killed with that uh, device the other day. Um, but from the other aspect, of course they should be stopped. Um, we're not doing any harm. We're using our radio for our hobby. And these people, for whatever reason, sheer devilment, vandalism, uh, they need to be stopped.
So that's the story of the Aylesby repeater bomb. Regardless of whether it was actually a bomb or a smoke flare, it was intended to cause trouble and potentially could have hurt somebody. So it's a good job it was caught and removed before this could happen. So if you have any recollections of this incident or similar instances, then leave them in the comments below. And all that's left to say is 7-3. Thanks for watching. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.